Names are the building blocks of every single thing we program. Classes, variables, methods, packages. That means using bad names is a great starting point for writing impossible to read code that makes other programmers regret being on your team. In this video, we'll talk about how to create names that will make your code a pleasure for other programmers or your future self to read and maintain. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description, so go check it out. A lot of these ideas are heavily inspired by one of my favorite programming books, a classic in the programming world called Clean Code by Robert C. Martin. You can find it at the link down in the description. Let's start with naming variables. You probably know you're supposed to use meaningful names, but what does that actually mean? To me, a good variable name will tell you exactly what it is being stored in the variable and will also convey the purpose behind that variable. So what if you're looking at someone's code and you see something like float num equals 94.5, but this doesn't tell you anything about what this variable actually represents. So maybe you know that this is supposed to be a weight. So a little bit better name would be weight. But if something weighs 94.5, that's not really enough information. Is that pounds, kilograms, milligrams? Let's say you find out this is supposed to be a weight in kilograms. So probably a better name would be weight in kilograms. The context of where a variable appears is also important to how you're going to name it. Right now, since this is a variable just floating in our main method, we don't know exactly what this is a weight of. Is it a rock or a planet or a cheeseburger? So in this context, it might make sense to add to the variable name to clarify what it's a weight of. So if it's a weight of a cat, we could say cat weight in kilograms. However, if we were going to create a weight variable as a property of a cat class, here it's fine to just use weight in kilograms as the variable name because we're already within the cat context. So it can be assumed here that the name, age, and weight are all attributes of the cat without having to spell it out in the variable names. For the length of your variable names, you want to keep them as short as you can while still keeping them meaningful. So here, cat weight in kilograms tells you everything you need to know without being overly long. Something like Fluffy's weight in kilograms before accounting for the rotational velocity of the Earth on the second Thursday of the month after I ran out of Diet Coke that one time. This doesn't help anyone. Make it long enough to be meaningful and no longer. You should also make your names pronounceable. If you're going to work on a team of developers, and anyone who's going to do this professionally will be, you're going to have a lot of occasions where you need to talk to somebody else about a piece of code. Maybe in a code review, or if they have a question about it, whatever. When you do, you'll want to be able to talk about those variables in plain English, like update timestamp. Instead of something like update mdhms. You could maybe also pronounce this update month, month, day, day, year, 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 hours, hours, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds, but you'll also want to be able to say the variable names without passing out from lack of oxygen. You should generally avoid using type information in your variable names. For example, for this cat weight in kilograms, you probably don't need to say float cat weight in kilograms. One exception to that could be if you're doing some kind of type conversion. For example, if you need to take in this weight as a string and convert it to a float, you might have one variable that's called string cat weight in kilograms and another called float just to differentiate the two in that instance. You should also generally avoid using single character variable names, unless that single character name is a convention, like in a for loop. The convention in a standard for loop is to use i for your iterator, so everybody will know what the purpose of this i is. Speaking of conventions, if there's some convention for naming what you're naming, use it. Here's a few quick Java naming conventions. For variables, you should use what's called camel case, which means that the first letter of every word in the variable name is going to be capitalized, except for the first letter, which should be lowercase. Class names should also be camel case, but with the first letter of the class name capitalized. Package names should be all lowercase with different sections separated by dots. If you're naming a variable that's intended to be a constant, like this private static final int grid size, the convention is to use all caps with the words separated by underscores. For enums, it's the same thing, all caps with multiple words separated by underscores, which makes sense because enums are just another kind of constant. You should generally avoid using underscores in other types of variable names that aren't constants. Class names and variable names should be nouns like cat or update timestamp or max hit points. Method names, however, should usually be a verb or a verb phrase, and the name should tell you exactly what the method does and, if it makes sense, what it does that to. 
For example, this saveCat method saves a cat to a database. You already know what this method is going to do just by looking at the name. And there's no surprises or anything with what the method actually does. In this case, we've called this method saveCat, but we could probably even get rid of the cat from the name because it's implied that this method is going to save whatever it is that's being passed in, which in this case is a cat. A great method name tells you what it does without having to look inside the code. You shouldn't have to look through the code to figure out what it's doing. Here's an example of a bad method name. So it's taking in a list of doubles and it's just called calculate. But what exactly is it calculating? Well, you can't know in this case without reading through the method to find out what it's actually doing. So then you have to take the time to read through it. Okay, what is it doing? Oh, it's calculating the average of this list of numbers. Well, a better name would be calculate average. Now you know exactly what this method is doing just by looking at the name. Methods that you make should only be doing one thing, so that should make naming them pretty straightforward. If you're having trouble giving your method a simple name, it might mean that your method is doing too much and needs to be broken up. Also, if you read the name of a method and then you're surprised by something that happens in that method, that probably means either the name is bad or the method is bad and doing something that it shouldn't. As before, you want to keep method names as short as you can while still keeping them meaningful. Sometimes to make a method name meaningful might mean a little bit longer of a name, but I'd rather read a long method name that tells me exactly what it does than see a short method name that leaves out important details about the method's functionality. A good way to know if a method name is good is if you read the method name and then look at a method and you just go, yep, does pretty much what I thought it would do take the time to choose great names when you're programming. Otherwise, you'll find yourself two years down the line looking at somebody's code going, what, what is this code even doing? Who wrote this garbage? Oh, it was me. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here with me and I'll see you next time.